So next, let's look at another UML notation. Remember, UML, Unified Modeling Language. And we're going to explore the fork and join and how we can use it in the practice of business analysis to depict process improvement opportunities. Now, as you'll realize, when we're looking for ways to improve the way work is done, displacing waste is an attractive option. As we indicate here, time is a form of waste. If we can reduce the amount of time it takes to perform work, we're displacing misused resources and obviously improving productivity. Now, detecting the opportunities for parallel activity then is an attractive time saver. What matters then is how do we depict it in a diagram so that when we communicate back to our subject matter experts and the business stakeholders, also for that matter ultimately the technical team, how can they understand what we have in mind uh, with the least effort trying to envisage our meaning? So the modeling activity, the modeling steps, the succinct way in which we can depict parallel activity is an important value add. So let's consider the UML fork and join for this purpose. We need to look at an example. It'll be easier to you know, think that through. I've selected booking a travel package as a scenario. And as you see in this flow, we have a series of steps in some sort of linear uh, sequence. Let's just walk through some of this. We'll get to the fork and join notation you know, near the end. So swiftly through the happy path, as we call it in, uh, in UML modeling, the most common way in things can play out. So selecting a reservation option, imagine the customer uh, interacts with a website, uh, the travel service, and uh, chooses to uh, select a tour, enter some tour preferences. We see that as the second step. The response from the system is to display the, the options available. And uh, now the customer selects one or more of those. And in response, the system will share you know, some itinerary information, some hotel accommodation issues, and so on. So the customer can review, is this really you know, ideal? And we see those steps modeled in our flow uh, so far. Now, we get to this important point where do we make a reservation? Does the customer want one of those options or not? And so the step is modeled as make reservation, but it may not play out as simply as that. So we've got some complexity now, uh, depending on certain conditions that are true in any instance of you know, performing this work. And so we've got some work to do perhaps on our second iteration that will enlarge on that. Let's take that as a uh, given. It's, uh, another kind of UML notation that we see depicted here, known as the uh, decision. And uh, the conditions, notice, are labeling the flows in uh, three different directions emerging from that decision diamond. That's a topic we'll deal with in a later session. I want to skip by that, and bear with me if we do, to look at uh, making the payment and particularly confirming the reservation. Because as we, as we talk perhaps on the next iteration with the business and learn more about this making uh, confirmation step, that there's multiple things that need to be done here, sub-processes that are actually quite different. And so you know, perhaps they can be done by different people or different systems. And indeed, they can be done in any order because they're not dependent upon one another. And this is where we have an opportunity to use the fork and join to denote just what I've described. Notice how it now depicted. We've got that black bar at the start, known as the fork, and it's referred to as a synchronization bar used to depict a fork. Uh, and after that, three different uh, activities are listed. Send confirmation email, add booking to reservation file, reduce tour seat availability to avoid, of course, multiple bookings or conflicts. So after those steps are completed, we now join, that is the second synchronization bar. We notice those flows go into that second bar and the join is complete and we can proceed with the next steps. In this case, the process ends. So notice how much real estate we've used for all of that, not too much. As well, notice how we've been able to uh, uh, denote 
uh, different activity without a logical sequence depending upon it. Those of you who are familiar with structured analysis techniques will recognize the AND clause. This is the equivalent in UML of the way we would depict the AND clause in a visualization, known as an activity diagram, actually. So let's go over the rules associated with the fork and join notation. We've covered them, but here's a, a useful list. First of all, of course, denote at the start of the parallel steps. That is the fork, the first synchronization bar. Notice in blue I've pointed it out uh, in the fragment we see here. The join denotes the end of the parallel steps, another synchronization bar. And notice that the fork has one flow in and multiple flows uh, coming out, in this case a couple, but it could be any number. Now the join equally, that second synchronization bar, has multiple flows inbound to the bar and then one emerging from it. Now, it's important in this case to realize that if the logic um, doesn't support that second bar bringing the flows back together again, we've got a problem and we need to go back and revisit it. Because it's required that every fork must have a companion join, otherwise you've got an error in your model. We also know that anything in between the parallel bars uh, must be performed or may be performed simultaneously but must be executed before we can exit at the join. Important rules to respect. Now, of course, you might be saying, well, there could be all kinds of complexity in the middle there uh, uh, you know, that needs to be defined. And yes, you're, that's okay. We can nest all kinds of steps, logical sequences with, between one flow. Let's say the update audit trail has all kinds of sub-steps and even decisions to be made. We can introduce all of that complexity into that flow as needed. What's certain, though, is all of that, as well as the other flows, that run adjacent to it in parallel must be completed before we can move on. And that's the issue for us. So a very valuable notation, the fork and join, governed by the unified modeling language standard that can be used to good effect to succinctly depict parallel activity and in turn then process improvement opportunities. All right, now let's do some practicing of this technique.